Now we have Bloodroot on the move. Yes, 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 this is working, I'm telling you. Once you start getting these plants in and they go to seed, they're going to start moving around. With Bloodroot, they are moved around by the help of ants. The seeds have eliosomes around them, which is something that the ants love to eat. And so to haul them back to their little home, their tunnel system, and then they will eat the eliosome and deposit the seed somewhere where the bloodroot just happens to love to grow. So this is one that has been moved by ants. Let's go up here for a minute. I wanna show you the original patch and then a couple more places it has moved to. Whoa, original patch of bloodroot. Look at the lushness. I mean, Eastern Deciduous Forest is rocking it. I love all ecosystems, everybody. I truly do. Everywhere I go, seek out nature and delight in the diversity. My homeland is Eastern Deciduous Forest, and so I feel a deep connection to this land, of course. But one of the great gifts of this land is rain, which can be really challenging sometimes because it can be gray and gray and gray and all you can crave is the desert sunshine. But then the sun comes out and you see what the rain has done in terms of the greenery of plants, the lushness of the plants, the diversity of the plants, and you go, oh, rain, yeah, you're pretty cool. All right, here's some more bloodroot. That one we tucked in, but this patch that we planted has grown so very much, way more than the others. And I think that's because, look at this, it's near a bird bath that I clean out and change daily. And they get the runoff, just like I'm saying, rain. It, it changes the game. Now let's go look. Okay, here is another patch. We plugged in about one or two there. They're doing stupendous. But I gotta show you where these new bloodroot are. Okay, we're following the path. Show you where we're going. This is a lilac. Look at here. This is actually two plants on the move here. This is bloodroot and wild ginger and thimbleweed. That's on the move. One of our woodland asters and Look, look back here. I just saw these. That is a blood root right in the middle. And then right in the middle, another one. This is under this, this dense shade of this lilac. Look at that. It is thrilling. Now, let me tell you about this lilac here. We love the lilac. It's beautiful. It's been here a really long time. And so what we keep doing is just sculpting. Because these bloodroot are gonna do better with a little bit more sun and a little bit less competition for the moisture, we will continue to favor the stalked plant right there, which just happens to be spice bush. And by doing that, we'll just, in the non-flowering time of the lilac, we will cut out some of the branches. And then over time, that lilac will just be a little bit diminished and then eventually it may be gone. I don't know. It sure smells good when we walk by it and the tiger swallowtails sometimes lay their eggs on here. But in terms of diverse insect life, I don't really see it on here and we don't have birds nest in here because the branching structure isn't right. So I like this slow and steady method, and Steve really does this a lot, of just sculpting. Getting the natives established, like there's pawpaw, and we've got different viburnums, and the woodland flora is fantastic. And then cut out the non-natives. 
just slowly and steadily. Uh, one thing that we really believe to be true is that you can't go into an area and just remove everything and not cause more harm than perhaps good at that moment in the short term. Of course, in the long term, it will work out just fine because you're going to reestablish the native plants. But if this is your home and you have time, why not do it over that span of time? It gives your body a break. It gives your mind a break. You can look at one area and say, okay, I'm going to work in this area. I'm going to reestablish native plants and get rid of the invasives in here. But that other corner of all the invasives or non-natives, I'm not going to touch for a few years, 10 years, whatever. And then as you do it, what you start doing is planting native plants in into an area you've freed up. And then you get those native plants in early and the seeds start to develop and then they start dropping and then when you do take out the rest of the invasives or in the term of the lilac just a non-native there are already native plants ready to spring forth super great method to use when you have time like that and when you have resources of your own time and labor I know a lot of groups just don't have time, conservation groups, they gotta go in and knock it out. But it is critical in a lot of areas to put the native plants back in because there just isn't gonna be the seed bank if you don't do that. And those seeds have got to be there, otherwise it's gonna all grow back up to invasive plants and then that's a big waste of time and energy. Okay, so I diverged. I just, whoa, whoa, <laughs> that was really loud for me. So by planting those natives, they're gonna get on the move, just like I showed you with the blood root. And then suddenly it's all happening on its own and everything doesn't need you quite as much. You can just keep the areas open for them.